My necklace. You got a drip shit. It finally happened. Alice broke my even star necklace. That's fine. I'll fix it later. Hello. Welcome. This is my January 2023 reading wrap up. Uh, will this page stop sticking out in the middle of the screen? Cat, come on. When are you going to go run now when I start filming? Why do these pets hate me? I'll be right back. Okay, here I am and with more light. So, how was your January? Are you enjoying 2023? I am not. But the reading is going pretty well. I read 13 books this year. No, no, this month. Please, Cyrus. In January, I read 13 books. A couple of them were novellas, but it's okay. Okay, let's just, let's go. Uh, the first one is... The Return of the King by Tolkien. Uh, I'm not pulling it out because this box set is very tight here, so it's a bitch to pull out. The Return of the King. I finally finished the trilogy. Five stars. I loved it so much. I don't know how to talk about Tolkien because everybody has already said everything there is to be said about Tolkien. There's nothing left to add. And if there is, I'm not smart enough to do it. But I really loved it. I really enjoyed the journey and all the character arcs and... The ending made me tear up. Um, I didn't actually know how this would end because I knew most of the plot points of the whole story because everybody knows it is so much in pop culture that it's hard not to know. But uh, I didn't know the actual ending and it made me tear up. And so I'm lightly obsessed now. <laughs> uh, so five stars, yes. Next one is Loot by... I don't, I don't even remember by jennifer mary thorne okay two stars it was um it's a story about an island called loot which is very uh isolated it's an isolated community where uh, these uh, very old families live and they have like a main family and the husband and wife of the family they address them as lord and lady something i can't remember the surname and Something is happening on loot. This woman, uh, the main character, she has been on it for almost seven years since she's got married to the Lord. And she knows that there is a celebration that comes every year called the celebration of something. It's like the day. And once every seven years on the day, there happens seven deaths on the island, which means that all throughout the seven years, there's no illness, nobody goes to war, um, there are no accidents, the harvests are plentiful and stuff like that. So kind of like the lottery, I guess. But they don't sacrifice people, they just happen to die in accidents on the island and there's nothing that can be done about this. And people are kind of just like rolling with it because it's been so good for so many years. And there's a war happening. I don't really understand about the war because it's described like it's like the third world war. But it's not, I don't know, the war is just kind of like in the background and it's talked about sometimes. And the main thing is that like nobody from Loot has gone to the war. Nobody. Hi, Editing Jane here. I just want to apologize. I realize I sound so stupid describing the plot of this book. But the war and everything around it is described so vaguely in it that it just feels like it's not really part of the story. Which is probably why I'm not able to describe it very well. It's been conscripted because the island protects it. And it was written pretty well, but the ending, I think, was uh, I think was a little scrambled. And I think that some of the things weren't thought out very well, but... It was like, some of the things just didn't make sense to me. Uh, so, two stars. But if you like a story like that, it's more of uh, an investigation into this woman's thoughts on what's happening than into what actually is happening. Uh, number three, number three is Bunny by Mona Awad. Look, if you've seen my vlog where I'm reading this while sleep deprived, you already know that I'm obsessed with this book. Five stars. This was so good. Yes, yes, everybody was right. This was amazing. And I wanted to read it for at least three years. I think ever since I heard uh, Books and Lala Kayla mention it. And I finally got my hands on it, and it was brilliant. I don't want to talk about it too much. Please watch my vlog if you want to hear my full thoughts. 
But this book lives rent free in my head. I think about it every single day and I don't think I'm ever going to stop thinking about it. And I actually already want to reread it. It was so good. So, uh, moving on. Number four is I Know Who You Are by Alice Feeney. And I gave it one star because what the fuck? Okay, so I read it because I really enjoyed Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney, which came out just last year. It was so good. It was four stars and a couple of things and it didn't make sense as well. But it was a very atmospheric, very very spooky, very um, gothic kind of read about a fucked up family. But this one... Okay, so what happens and I know who you are. There's a woman. She's an actress. She's like starting her... getting her start in Hollywood. She's just becoming um, interesting to people. And she's just starting in her first movie. And her husband disappears. She just comes home one day and he's not there. His keys, his wallet, his phone, everything's there, but uh, he's gone. And they start looking for him, and they think that she did it. And at the same time, um, there's a bunch of this stuff happening where she's trying to star in a new movie. There's this other actress that she's uh, kind of in a little tussle of popularity constantly. And we're trying to figure all of this out. And at the same time, there are these flashbacks to her childhood where she was abducted as a kid and raised by the people who abducted her, and what happened with that, and how it led to what's happening to her now. And it was... First of all, it was unnecessarily mean to a bunch of characters. I don't like when characters who are uh, just somewhere in the background are described in detail as ugly, because they just need some, you know some coloring in their personality that is not good writing creating a side character of a security guard in the mall or something and then describing how fat and ugly he is for a whole paragraph is not good writing so it's not there was a bunch of stuff like that and also like the plot twist surprised me but the ending this character is the dumbest bitch in the world you know how very often people will read mystery thrillers and they'll say these characters were stupid, it was frustrating to read? I experience that a lot as well because I read a lot of mystery thrillers and yes, quite often people in stressful situations can be dumb. I mean, it's not, it doesn't annoy me. But this woman, she was just like obstinate and stupid for no reason at all. Yes, I understand that she was in a stressful situation, but sometimes it felt like she was sabotaging herself. Also, the police procedure in this and the way the policewoman who investigated her husband's disappearance acted towards her. I'm sorry, I'm not a policewoman or I don't work with law in any way. But I feel like if a police officer acted in a way that this woman acted towards the main character, I would have filed a complaint and it would have, like, what the hell? She was abusive to the witness, to the woman who reported her husband missing because she thought he did it. And it just, this book was a fucking ride. I mean, really, if you feel like reading Alice Feeney and you haven't read anything of hers, read, uh, read Daisy Darker and skip this one for the love of God. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, number five is The Mystery of the Blue Train by Agatha Christie. And I gave it four stars. It's um, my ongoing obsession with uh, Hercule Poirot. This is number six or seven in his series. And uh, most of the Poirot books that I'm reading are getting four or five stars from me. So um, don't don't even worry about it. Uh, the Mystery of the Blue Train uh, is a story about this rich heiress whose father gifts her with these uh, priceless rubies. And she goes on the blue train, which is a very fast train that goes from somewhere to somewhere, I don't remember. Uh, she goes on this train to Paris to meet someone, and she gets murdered on the train. And Poirot also happens to be on the train, and he gets embroiled in the investigation, as usual. I gave it four stars. It was lovely. It was wonderful. I don't feel like I can talk about uh, these books a lot in wrap-ups like that. And maybe one day I'll make a full video series about Agatha Christie books, or just Poirot books. But it was four stars, it was delightful, Hastings is an idiot as usual, but um, I enjoyed it immensely, four stars. Book number six is Black Coffee, again what? by Agatha Christie, I gave it four stars, it's a novella. There's this great house, 
There's a family in the house and Poirot gets invited to dinner and a murder happens and he has to investigate it. I feel like it's hard to describe these books also because most people know a lot of the plots of them, especially because of the TV series uh, with the one with David Suchet and so many people have seen that. So um, I don't want to spoil anything too much, but I also like feel like I'm not giving too much of a synopsis for you to be interested in them. But then again, if you are interested in Poirot, I feel like you should start from the beginning. So I w I'm not going to give away too many details about like number nine, and number seven and so on. Number seven that I read is Dead Man's Mirror by Agatha Christie. Next number in the uh, Poirot series. And I gave it four stars. This one was really interesting. It was really clever. Um, Poirot gets called in by this man who says that he's like a patriarch of this big family. And he calls him in and says, someone in my house is a rat. And uh, I need you to come here and help me figure out who it is. And... Uh, the explanation for the murder and how it happened and who did it is as always so interesting and i just i really want to know more about agatha christie to know how she came up with these things number 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 eight. Oh yeah uh north singer abby by jane austen four stars i've got a whole vlog up with this one and the next one so i'm not going to talk about them too much this is about Catherine moreland who loves gothic novels and then things start happening to her where she thinks she's in a gothic novel and then book number nine that I read is Noise and Grabby by Val McDermott. Same plot, but modern times. If you're interested in why I read this book twice, please watch the vlog. I'll link it in the description down below. Book number 10. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. On the Road Boing. by Jack Kerouac. I'm going to say two things that I said many, many times in the last few days. Because while I was reading this book, one star by the way, I was bitching about it to everybody I know in every Discord server of bookish people that I'm in. I wish that Kerouac was alive so I could hunt him down and kick him in the nuts. I want this book to burn in hell for 10,000 eternities. That's not good reads of you, by the way, and I stand by it. What the actual hell? You know what? I wanted to DNF it so many times, I was not having a good time. I was genuinely suffering reading through this piece of shit. So many... What the hell is that on my wall? Is that paint peeling? Is that a ghost? Okay, I'll finish filming and then I'll go explore the ghost. Right, so on the road. First of all, it was boring. Second of all, everybody in it was a piece of shit. All of those people were horrible. I read so many reviews saying like, oh, it's the portrait of America. It's this beautiful tapestry of human emotion. Is it? Is it? If that is a tapestry of human emotion, I want nothing to do with human emotion and humanity. That was horrible. That was awful. I read a lot about beatnik culture and honestly, all of those people, I'm glad they're dead. I know that if I was a much more popular booktuber, there would be some fans of this whole movement and of Jack Kerouac that would come from my throat. But honestly, I think that this book deserves to burn. This one goes right in the apocrypha. It's not a classic that I feel we need to hold on to. And while I read the reviews, there were a couple really heartwarming ones where people were like saying that they were on the road for work for many years and this book kind of helped them through it. And I, and I thought, that's nice. That's a good sentiment. And I'm glad that that book helped these people through some tough times. But at the same time, I'm just thinking, is it... Why? Why? It was so bad. It was so awful. Sorry, I feel like I've been talking about how bad it is for 10 minutes, but I haven't told you what it is. So it's a non-fiction novel um, about Jack Kerouac's travels across America. He lived in New York with his aunt, and then he goes on this road trip with uh, a bunch of his friends. He needs to meet them up in Denver. Then they go to Cali. Then they go back to New York. And then they have to travel again somewhere with their like crazy stuff that's going on. And he hitchhikes. He meets all of these different people, drug addicts and drunks and people that are like, there's this one guy who goes like, oh, if I don't have any money, I'm just going to go into an alley and like, you know, rob somebody. And Jack's like, mm, yeah, okay. 
And, you know, there are a bunch of people like that. They treat women like meat. Women treat men like meat. Everybody's an asshole in it. Nobody thinks of anybody else but themselves. There's a little bit of, like, kind of friendship between men sometimes. But then I look at them again, and two paragraphs later, they're completely betraying each other and acting on their own interest only. And it was disgusting. Yes, every once in a while there was like a nice turn of phrase, but that is not redeem. That, that does not make this book redeemable. I think that the whole culture of beatniks centered around drugs, drinking, bumming around, just is not worth it. So I'm glad that I read it just so that I can say how much I fucking hate it. Moving on. I hope I never have to speak or think of it again. Book number 12 is Triangle at Rhodes, Bag of Christie. It's another novella. I gave it three stars. It's just about this like love triangle. Poirot is uh, on holiday with Hastings and there are just these other people on holiday there and he starts to observe them and notice things between them and then murder happens and that's just the whole plot. It's really short. Book number 12 is Boy. Lord Edgeworth Dies by Agatha Christie again. I gave it four stars. This one was really interesting because the characters in it were fascinating. Um, so this woman, she's like a fancy, beautiful socialite. Uh, socialite. Yes, yeah, socialite. She approaches Poirot and asks him to go and have a meeting with her husband who refuses to divorce her because she really wants to get divorced so she can get like marry somebody else. Uh, and Poirot does this. And after a while, this man, Lord Edgeware, is killed. And he needs to investigate. And the characters in it were fascinating. The uh, culprit is fascinating. It was so interesting. And the ending was kind of creepy. But creepy in like a very human way, you know. So if you read it, you know what I mean. You know, sometimes you think about certain things that happened in history. And they make you really scared because you realize a person did this. And the next one, the last one on my list... Number 13, one I read is Sundial by Katrina, Katrina Ward. Yeah, Katrina Ward. I actually finished it today, but technically, but uh, I had like a little bit left and I read most of it in January, so I'm counting it for January. I gave it three stars. I wanted to read it because I really like the cover, but uh, I went to read it because I liked The Last House on Needless Street. It was pretty creepy and it was really good. Sundial had really good writing, but poor structuring. I feel like it needed more polishing because it felt a little bit disjointed. Uh, I enjoyed the plot twists, but at the same time, they didn't grab me so much as The Last House on Needless Street did. Trigger warning. For animal, cruel, for animal cruelty, mild gore, um, I guess you could say child abuse, sort of, kind of. Uh, and I think that if you liked Rose Matter by Stephen King, you would like this one. I think you would enjoy Sundial for this one and for the whole weirdness of it and the unraveling of what is happening. Um, but other than that, it was just okay. I gave him three stars, but like, I'm not mad about it. That's it. These are my 13 books of January 2023. I think it was a pretty good reading month and I hope that February is even better. I have a bunch of books on my TBL for February. I already posted the video as well. So please tell me what you read in January. If your reading year started well, uh, tell me what you read and what your favorite book that you read in January was. And if you watched this far and you don't want to leave a comment, please leave me a book emoji so that I know that you watched this far in my video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon. Slavo Ukraini.